tell me a little bit about growing up. You, you're from Buffalo and then you moved to Vegas when you were a kid? I Yes, I was born in Buffalo. And um, when I was 15, I, I moved to Vegas. My father was living out there with my stepmom and my mother was going through a divorce. And so I moved in with my dad, which was a um, it was not a great time. I think at 15, I really didn't want to leave my high school friends and stuff, but it turned out to be a really good thing for me. Um, I obviously made new friends and, uh, and if I, I think if I didn't leave, then I, I might still be in Buffalo. So it, it opened my horizons in a lot of way and, and made me more comfortable with moving and stuff. So after school, I moved to Los Angeles on my own accord. And that was a comfortable transition. Did you, did you always have, you know, kind of an acting or performing bug? <laughs> I didn't. I was very shy as a kid, um, very to myself. Um, it, it was because I filled in for a job modeling shoes for a girl who was working for my father. And last minute she had to cancel her show and I had the right size shoe. And so I just filled in for her. And then the agent asked me to sign with them and started doing just local modeling. And then she sent me out for an audition for a commercial. And um, it was during that experience that, you know, reading these lines and being able to sort of go into another space or hide into a character um, or even like throw myself into someone else, but not not feel like I, I'm exposing everything about myself. So it, it felt like a, a cathartic experience. And at that point, I wanted to move into it a little bit more. True Cinderella story with with the shoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, so I got a lot. And the the best part about it was I got so many free shoes because they were sample size. So all the shoes that they didn't go into production, I I would be able to keep. So I had wow really neat unique shoes. And for a a girl at that age, it was a great gift. Mo modeling is such a you know it, it, it's it's a great career but it's also a horrible career at times because it's long hours you deal with creepy creepy people sometimes and uh i don't know i don't know do you get paid fairly or uh, is that the agency's uh, uh responsibility to make sure you get paid fairly i think it depends on the job i uh at that time i you know put myself through college and stuff with some of the money and um i it, i thought it was fair pay but after a while, I just got bored with it. It was it wasn't very stimulating intellectually at all, and so it wasn't something I wanted to continue to do. But it was fun for a little while. Are you are you a brainy person? Then do you do you enjoy you know reading and being stimulated? Uh, mentally? Yes, yes, I love reading and I love all things that have to do with the brain. I I invest in a lot of brain activity stuff. Um, so yeah, I listen to a lot of podcasts that have to do with brain and, and uh, function and how to get things working better. Um, <clears throat> I find it really interesting. And so, yeah, I, I love that stuff. And, and from, from the modeling, you, you, uh, as you were explaining, you were graduated into, into acting. Do you take yeah. acting classes now? Do you, do you hone those, those talents? That was the first thing I did when I moved to LA because I didn't have any experience and I, I certainly felt insecure about it. I, I knew I had um, instincts because I ended up booking that job, the first mm. audition I went on, um, and an emotional availability, but I didn't have confidence in knowing what I was doing or when I was approaching roles that were very different from me. So um, I went to school at Stella Adler, which really gave me a great foundation in character work and being able to uh, learn how to find somebody's character through making memories that they would have had um, that you know really hit their heart. And so through that work and then various other classes in LA, because there's every teacher out here, I have certainly feel like I have a foundation to know what I'm doing now. Enjoy uh, improv as part of your, your training? Yes, I've done a lot of improv. I love comedy. I love physical comedy. I've always liked being silly since I was a little girl. So um, any any chance I have to fall on my face or, you know, be the goat in a situation, I, I stick my hand up and like, yes, me, please. Well, we're going to talk about how I met your mother in a little bit, but your new series that you have is, of course, Sons of Thunder, um, which is on Pure Flix. It is, it is a really a lovely 
story of redemption and and righting wrongs and things like that. And tell me a little bit about, was there an audition process for that? Yes, there was. There was uh, two scenes that I auditioned for at home because all of the auditions have, have you know, they're, they're contained in your house now. So the first scene was me running into um, my ex fiance who essentially left me at the altar, uh, flirted with my maid of honor, was heavily into a gang and drugs and addiction and that cycle and um, a lot of hurt with that. And so we run into each other and I'm still full of uh, bitterness and unforgiveness. And then the second scene was him and I <clears throat> on a friendly date together and and the resolve and the healing that that was able to take place. But it certainly didn't happen overnight. And in the series, there are the first few episodes, I, um, I'm not letting him in and, and he doesn't deserve my forgiveness. And I think that's something very relatable for anybody who's been hurt or betrayed. So um, being stuck in that anger and over time and seeing that he has changed and it's possible for, for people to change, I start to warm up a little bit. And I think both of us are allowed to heal gradually through that. Is it a difficult task to play a character whose heart is walled up like that? I mean, and then slowly, you know, opens up again to love? I think that it wasn't hard for me to uh, think of certain circumstances in my own life that have been difficult uh, to forgive. And um, so it wasn't, it wasn't hard to relate to. It wasn't, it wasn't a fun to be in that space all the time. I mean, I really give him a hard time the first couple episodes, but um, no, I think it was more of a cathartic experience. Is there a lot of preparation you do as an actress anyway? Do you do you uh, go with a stellar Adla and, and look for a backstory? Do you create musics for her so that there's a rhythm to what you do? Uh, depending on each role, I will. This um, this happened really very fast. I auditioned and, and they cast me off tape. And then we were shooting all six episodes back to back and we were shooting them out of order. So initially, um, you know, we, we would do some things from season one and some things, I mean, from episode one and five or four all in the same week. So I was just trying to map that out and track it um, as we were going on the fly, which was a, a very unusual experience and it certainly kept me on my game. This portion of Screen Chatter is presented by VP Dental. Check out our great dental plan starting at just $16 per month. Hi, you think you're probably sober? Yeah. But you're thinking about taking the back roads home just in case. Why would you do that? Probably okay isn't okay. Call a cab, a car, or a friend. Good choice. I don't see Charlene in in anything that you. I mean, you you really take on different characters, even if it's a guest shot on something. You know, you you do a great job. Thank you. I, I did have a, a friend of mine say to me, he saw some movie recently and he's like, you didn't even look like you. And there is, uh, I do have some sort of chameleon-esque thing that I've even noticed that physically, um, as I prepare differently and as I'm thinking different thoughts, my face can take different form, which is very, <laughs> very strange. Do you love auditioning? Russell Crowe one time told me, he said, Actors are professional auditioners, and we only stop auditioning when we get a gig, and then we go back to our regular job of auditioning. Sure. Um, how true is that, number one? And number two is, do you enjoy the process of auditioning? Yeah, I, I think at some point, while I, I I really liked auditioning when we did it in person, because you'd have, you know, like an audience when you're doing a play, you can feed off and monitor the room and see what's working, what isn't working. and. Um, at some point I put it in my head, okay, when I'm auditioning for the casting director, it's just an audience of one. And so I took the focus out of me looking for their approval into this is my take on this circumstance and this person, and I'm going to do a performance and hopefully you like it. And it, it, 
it really allowed me to enjoy it because then I was looking at a performance versus wanting a job. Yeah. And yeah, that, that changed it a lot for me. Auditioning on Zoom is, is I think, the new thing. And you can audition internationally. You don't have to go to London and, and audition. And it seems to be very um, convenient, but you, the, the human element is is taken away. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So sometimes you you get a feeling about someone when you have them in person. You get, I think you have a fuller experience of the work, the person, the character. If you want to work uh, alongside this individual for the next however long. So that is missing. Um, but the convenience factor and that I can move around, I could be traveling, I could be staying with family, be in another country, which is really very nice too. So like anything, there's the silver lining, the pros and cons, and we're all getting a little bit better at the Zoom thing and uh, working, working what we have to do, you know? It's true. Uh, your stint on How I Met Your Mother, you are such, you, you are such a memorable character. And oh. it didn't start out like that. Wasn't it supposed to be just for one, one show? Yeah, that's correct. It was one episode. I think, I think it was episode three. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, and yeah, they just kept calling me back little by little. And then the character storyline grew little by little and, uh, and the fan base grew and, um, I have a lot of great memories of that time. It was great people working with all the producers and director and all that cast. It was a, a really nice place to be. And I'm so thankful that I was, yeah, I just kind of fell into that. Who knew? We, especially when you get a small role on something that it can potentially turn into something more. Going back to the old adage, there are no small parts because, you know, it's just, it can, it can blossom for you. That's true. There really isn't. There every even if it's just one line, that individual still has a whole life of experience before coming into that moment. I truly think that Neil Patrick Harris is an American treasure. He can do anything. Yeah, that's true. He's he is extremely talented, very professional, and it's obvious why he's had the success that he has. And and working with with the likes of Kobe and and uh, uh, you know uh, the other cast, Jason. Uh, that must have been just a, a sheer joy. Yeah, yeah, I think so. They, they're they very fun. Jason is very jovial. He's always cracking jokes, very easy to be around. Um, Kobe's super nice. Allison is incredibly friendly and, and Josh is as well. I mean, it's just a great collective group of people. And I think that's why, partly why the show is so successful is because you have a great group of people who have wonderful chemistry and that kind of reads to an audience. And you've been a part of series. I mean, other series, do you get spoiled being on a series? I mean, the way that they treat you, the catering. I mean, it's just, it seems to me like it's a party. I think that you get spoiled doing the half hour sitcom um, schedule because, you know, on Monday, it's usually a table read on Tuesday, there'll be a quick rehearsal and then you're shooting Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and it's only three weeks out of the month. So the schedule is extremely light um, compared to if you're doing an hour long drama where you're working potentially, you know, 15 hours in a day, six days a week. So that part of it, it's like, oh, you can be doing what you love and have this great job and be laughing all day long and also have a life, you know, real life. Did you do a lot of live performance as well? I mean, uh, plays and things like that? I have done some. Um, some plays here in LA. I, I would have loved to have done more, but yeah, I, I've done a handful of really fun plays with great people. You enjoy that experience, the live, you know, is there that adrenaline rush that you have? And Yes, yes, there is. And and, and there is a relationship between yourself and, and the audience and your day and how it's going and how you have to make adjustments on the fly if somebody messes up or there's a happy accident. So it keeps you on your feet and um and then the, just being able to collaborate with a group of people over time you know it really becomes a family for for that duration which is really nice now, speaking of family do you have do you come from a large family is it a small family oh i have a very large family um my my father's side's all italian and uh there's i have so many cousins so you know um holiday dinners are huge and 
I mean, there's family members I don't even know of that you meet years later. So it's very, very big. Um, and my mother's side is Italian and Spanish. So it's a little bit smaller, but um, yeah, big, 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 loud. <laughs> full that of sounds light. like like yeah. me when I cook. It's just, hey, there's room for everybody. Come on in and just yeah. slide, everybody slide over. Yes. <laughs> are, are you a good there's not always a, a lot of room to talk. And I think in large groups, um, I always kind of went into myself and got quiet. And maybe that's why I enjoyed acting so much because I I had the space to really speak and experience. But when there was a lot of people fighting for uh, the focus, I, I did the opposite and went into myself. So. Do you have any uh, any aspirations of, of, of hopping behind the camera, uh, doing some producing and directing? Uh, potentially maybe doing some directing down the line. I haven't pursued it yet, but um, I do like working with actors, um, being able to, you know, have work with someone, get things out of them that they don't even know that can happen. So I've enjoyed that. I've coached people for their auditions before. So maybe down the road, I'll do some of that. I think I would go to you for, for coaching if I if I ever auditioned for anything again. Thank you. You're very sweet. You can stay. Most, most people just call me and go, uh, we need a bartender. So, you know. <laughs> um, and and are you always auditioning? I mean, are you always looking for that next project or are you settled now? There, I mean, that is the actor's life as you're kind of always auditioning. Uh, how often they come in and the frequency is always up and down. So I, I try to make sure I've got a lot of hobbies going for the for the downtime. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the gig, you know? You, it's <laughs> not every once in a while, they'll just say, hey, I, we're gonna offer you this film if you'd like to take it, but it doesn't happen that often. Uh, do you do uh, voice work as well? I do a ton of voice work. I, I fell into voice acting um, the first year I moved to LA mm -hmm. and it's been a great, uh, consistent um, life as I've pursued the on-camera stuff, which will be very up and down. So yeah, um, I do a lot of ADR loop group stuff and also some dubbing for some other foreign shows. Um, yeah. well, my All my friends are, you know, are, are voice actors. Uh, oh. Yeah, I mean, well, my aunt, my aunt was June Ferre, who uh, was the voice of Rocky the Flying Squirrel and, and Natasha in the old Jay Ward cartoons. And, Amazing. Um, she was the Grandma Willow in Pocahontas. And, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, so I grew up with a lot of voice actors. And I think that is as pure of an acting job as you can get because you're only using your voice. But with that, you're using your body to underline your voice. Yeah, to emote and express when you don't have this happening it all has to come from inside so yeah it is it is a great way to um exercise acting and really develop um your connection to that instrument you know the vocal instrument is so important it's very rare when you get to interact with other actors in a in a vocal way uh they they just want you alone in the booth and and that's sometimes hard that's true. Yeah. Back in the day, we, a lot of us would be in the room together. So uh, you just have to have a vivid imagination and, uh, you know, see see the whole scene as you're doing it and it'll, it will come through. As, as we kind of, you know, wrap up our, our, our time together and God bless you. Thank you so much for, you know, spending some time with me. What, what, what's the best piece of advice uh, anyone has ever given you in for this career? That's a good question, Tony. Best piece of advice in this career. You know, I think it's just, I think it's less about what you're going to receive from the outside. So I, this isn't a, a, like I follow Joseph Campbell and his, one of his famous quotes is follow your bliss, you know, and the rest will follow. So it's really getting in touch with the, why am I doing this? And if it's, you know, an innate desire to do this, whether I get paid or not. If I'm following that truth inside, um, you know, prosperity and, and usually will 
will uh, go along with it. So it's always checking in just to see if this is still my path and if it is to go fully into that. And that also creates a happy life. Do you find your passion is renewed with every project? I mean, do, do you kind of, there, there's a moment even in marriage where you kind of go, well, I'm lukewarm right now, but then you fall back <laughs> in love. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's part of life, but sure. with acting, is it the same thing? Oh yeah. There's so many ups and downs. There's plenty of times I've been lukewarm or, you know, might not have a great experience on a job. And um, yeah, when you go back to the root of it, or even like, you know, I take a lot of singing lessons or movement class, like getting back into just the basics helps me renew it. This portion of Screen Chatter is presented by VP Dental. Check out our great dental plans starting at just $16 per month. Charlene, it is a pleasure to get to know you and thank you so much for being part of uh, of Screen Chatter and uh, uh, all the best to you. Break a leg every day. Absolutely. You too. It's lovely to talk to you, Tony. Thanks for having me. This portion of Screen Chatter is presented by VP Dental. Check out our great dental plans starting at just $16 per month. <laughs>